Hi, glad you made it to section 5. In this section we are going to build our application dashboard. We will learn about possible ways of interacting with child content from our component and about the component's lifecycle hooks. We will also take a look at how to integrate an external library and interact with the DOM. Finally, we will learn about how to best make our application production ready. Now to the first video in this section. In this video, we are going to take a closer look how we can communicate between parent and child components by creating a tabs component. Okay, as you can see, I have created already a widget component here in our dashboard. I basically leveraged what we have learned so far, like the content projection by having here a title and the body region, just as we had in our model dialogs, and then I integrated the widget on our dashboard. So as you can see, I have a title and a body here. So what we are interested in here is to learn something new. So that's why we are going to build a tab component for our widget. So as you can see, I've already copied over the tabs implementation from the material design light page, the same page where we have gotten our layout from. As with most tab implementations, we have a title section which contains the headers. And by clicking on one of those header, a body section below gets activated, which are usually connected by IAD. While this works already because we have included the material design light script here, we're going to code this on our own as an Angular 2 component. And there are different ways of implementing a tab component in Angular 2. And the Thoughtgram block, a very popular Angular 2 related block, has one that you might want to have a look at. So we want to have a similar API as they describe on their website, like having an outer tabs component, parent component, which has multiple child tab components. So let's implement the single tab component first. It is actually quite straightforward. So we basically have a diff with some classes on top of it, which match the classes from the material design light. And then we have an ng content section where our content will be projected. Now, based on the API we've designed before, a tab can be visible or not. Therefore, we create a Boolean member variable is active here. And we accordingly set the hidden property on that tab. We don't need it as an input property here defined in our element because the user of our tab component won't set it when defining it in HTML. This is rather set programmatically at runtime, but we will see in a minute. Finally, we also have a title input property which the user passes when defining our tab component in the HTML code. We don't need to render the title though because this is something that is done on the tab navigation bar handled by our tabs parent component. So let's see. First, we need to create our tabs component. Based on the API we agreed upon, our tabs component gets a series of tabs defined within its body. Thus, once more, we need an ng content section here. This will be the place where our tabs will be defined. Next, if we look at the material design light tab implementation, we need to render the tab navigation bar. So for each tab content, a corresponding tab button, which activates the tab. For that to work, we need to get a number of tabs somehow, or better said, we need to get a reference to all the tab components rendered within the ng content of our tabs component. Let's quickly rewrite the material design tabs component here with the new API we want to have in order to get a better understanding of what end result will look like. So again, as you can see, our tabs parent component has multiple child components of type tab component. So basically we need to get hold of that list of child components. And this can be done by importing the content children and query list from Angular 2 core. And by using the content children tag and passing it a reference of our tab component instance, we will get all instances of a tab injected in this list that is placed within our tabs component. That's what is called content children. There's also a content child decorator for when you're only expecting a single child. Query list on the other side is a data structure provided by the Angular 2 core. It is basically an unmodifiable list, which Angular itself keeps up to date when the component state changes, like when new tabs would be added dynamically. Now, when you browse through the Angular 2 code, you might also get across the add view children decorator or add view child. You may wonder what they are actually about or what's the difference to the content child. Well, contrary to the content child, a view child is an element that is part of the component's template and it's not something that's projected into it via like an ng content section. But if you want to dig deeper into this topic, Minko Gechev has a nice blog post on the difference between view children and content children, as well as basic content projection. As a last step, we want to activate a given tab whenever its title is clicked. So we use an event and call select tab again. 
And the select tab implementation is actually quite simple. First of all, we deactivate all other active tabs. And finally, we activate the tab that has been clicked on. Now to complete implementation of our tab, we also need to activate the first tab whenever our component is being rendered. Now if you would like to do that activation like in the ng-init event or in the constructor, it wouldn't work because the content children wouldn't have been initialized yet. Each component has a series of such lifecycle hooks that allow us to interfere at various stages of that lifecycle of our component. All of them are described nicely in the Angular documentation. In our situation, the ng after content in it suites our needs. As you can see from this, the description, this function gets invoked when Angular projects the external content into its view. So basically when all of our tab instances have been projected successfully into our component. So let's place our logic in that ng after content init function in our component. What we have to do is basically to get all components and see whether none of them has been activated yet. And if that's the case, we simply activate the first component from that content children query list. Okay, to complete the implementation of our tab here, we simply copy and paste in some styles that make it look a bit nicer. Now finally, we jump back to our dashboard and import the tab as well as the tabs component. We also have to fix here our tabs widget. And if we refresh the application now, we see that the tab component works nicely. What's missing here, however, is the styling of the currently active tab. So let's also quickly adjust that one. So we can easily implement this by using a native Angular directive, which allows us to conditionally add some class, in this case is active to our navigation link. And again, if we refresh, we now see that the active tab is nicely highlighted. Great. So in this video, we built a tab component. While doing so, we learned about new Angular 2 concepts like the add content children and the view children decorator, as well as the ng after content init lifecycle event.